Hello, everyone. I see we have some people joining in and that's great. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Fun Friday. And this session is gonna be building your own herb garden at home. So thank you for joining us today. And I hope that you learned something from this. Hi everyone, so nice to see you. Uh, we're gonna go through a, a little presentation and talk about what herbs are good to grow at home and the three components for exactly what you need. We're gonna talk about organic fertilizers to keep things natural so you don't have to add additional chemicals and just some of the benefits that herbs have. And then I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how to plant and what you need, the basic supplies, some tips on turning your, your black thumb green. Um, I know it took me a while. I don't claim to be any kind of nursery expert, but I have spent a, the last couple months at a nursery in town and um, getting some advice hands-on from them and asking around some of our nurses uh, at Ironwood are really into planting and they had a lot to contribute to me as well. So Sandy was going to join us today, but she had to fly off and visit her grandbaby. She hasn't seen them in a long time. So um, I'm sad she couldn't be here, but she definitely was an inspiration for this. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. I see some people on there. So I'm going to share a presentation with you guys. You don't, you get a lot of information. You don't have to look just at my face. There we go. So building your own herb garden at home. That's what we're going to talk about today. On the left, you'll see a list of herbs that are really good for growing at home. These are ones that are really easy. They do well, especially if you're inside, if you're at a house, you're in an apartment, it doesn't matter. These are the ones that are going to kind of be successful. Uh, parsley, lemon balm, lemon balm and amazing we're actually going to plant that live today um if you could just smell it i wish i had smell a vision on this uh fun friday and jessica's here our other social worker so um we're both here and this is fun fridays from both of us chives uh those are those skinny little onions uh, that go well on dips and salads oregano thyme rosemary sage and bay laurel a bay laurel i want to point out it is a bay leaf so it will turn into a tree, but it starts off very small, but you have to be prepared to change it to a bigger potter and a bigger potter and maybe even move it into a tree stand at one point because it will get big. Bay leaves are those things that you put in stews and soup and give it some really good flavor. Uh, the tip with indoor plants, the smaller the leaf, the more successful it's going to be with low light. The broader the leaf, it needs more light. So everyone wants to learn how to grow basil in their apartment or in their house, in their windowsill. Basil is one of those plants that's going to need a lot of light, like at least six to eight hours of full sunlight. So you're going to have to leave it in the window. You're going to have to leave it in front of that patio door. If you look at that list on the left, most of those plants, their leaves are kind of skinny or they're small. Um, even the oregano is kind of smaller leaf, but those basil leaves, those big round ones that look so good and taste so delicious with tomatoes and mozzarella, um, they, they need a lot of light. We're going to talk about ways that you can use alternative light if you can't provide direct windowsill sunlight for that length of time. The three must-haves. We're going to talk about each of these in depth a little bit, just so you understand exactly what you need. but light water and temperature are key to growing herbs at home successfully and the best thing i can talk about or recommend is that when you pick out um, a packet of seeds to grow this for example is sweet basil you want to read the back of it and look for how much sun they need you know is it a high water plant how deep do you have to plant the seeds how biz big is it anticipated to be and how many days it going to take to germinate. If it's going to take a couple weeks and you're sitting there after week one going, I think I, I think I just screwed up because there's nothing coming. Well, it might take a little bit more time. Some of the seeds can grow really fast. I know like with chives, you're supposed to see growth within a week. So those happen really fast, but definitely need the light, water and temperature. So for light, we talked about that herbs love lots of sun. Um, you want to be careful though, 
at where you tr choose to put those. You want them to get full sun, but you don't want them to burn. So in summertime here, for example, leaving your basil plant out on a patio in full sun might not be a great idea while you go away for work or you go out of town. You, you kind of have to watch and control the light even when it does come naturally. Full spectrum grow lights are great for herbs. You can buy these on Amazon. Uh, some of the nurseries sell them as well. You need to make sure that you keep them at least about a foot away from the actual plant. You don't want them to burn the plant. You want them to get too close. They also don't provide the same type of light that natural sun does. So for example, basil needs at least six to eight um, hours of sunlight a day. But if you're using a spectrum grow light, you're gonna need about 12 to 16 hours. So basically when you wake up in the morning, you're gonna turn your lights on. And then when you go to bed at night, you're gonna turn them off. Now, a combination of both would probably be easiest for um, anyone to do. And they range in price. You can get a really inexpensive light or you can get a professional setup. It depends on what, what you want your herb garden to be. Water, you need water. As you can see in the little picture, there's these uh, watering globes. And so you can fill those up and kind of place them in the plant. These are great for if you're going away for the weekend or you're going out of town for a couple days and you wanna make sure that your plants have the water if they need it. These kind of assess if the plant's ready for water um, and then it provides it to it. If your plant doesn't need the water, it doesn't release it. It's just an automatic gravity kind of pull and it detects whether or not the soil's um, dry and needs uh, extra moisture. And also jazzes up your plant, makes it look real pretty. They're so decorative. Again, you could find these at Walmart, you can find them at Amazon, anywhere in the community. A lot of these shops have some really cool designed ones. Herbs and plants, they need drainage. So when you choose a pot, you need to make sure that it has a drainage hole in the bottom or that you've added some holes. You can also place gravel or stones. So if you live in an apartment, you can walk around and maybe grab a little handful and put it in a sandwich bag as you're going around or outside of a building. And you can also purchase stones. You can buy a bag at Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, but you're gonna buy a big bag because they sell them very big. Another way to do it, I'm gonna show, is this little, little bag here of decorative stones. You can see how pretty they are. They're like a blue glass stone. So this little bag is enough to fill at the bottom of one pot. And that was a dollar at, at our, one of our local dollar stores. So that's an affordable way to just get a little bit of stones when you don't wanna have a whole big bag of rock at your house. So you can just get what you need and use what you need. Those stones you're gonna place at the bottom and then you're gonna put your dirt in your plants. And we'll, we'll show that live so that you can see what I mean, but that helps provide that, that drainage. Overwatering is the number one killer of indoor plant. People go, oh, it looks dry, I'm gonna give it more. But really you have to go till that top inch of soil is dry. And so every plant is different and you have to adjust for the conditions in your home. Do you have a very humid home or apartment? Do you have a very dry home? Is it summer and the air conditioner is running and pulling out humidity in the air? So you can also use a soil moisture meter. This is a little bit more technical. It kind of detects it and tells you exactly when you need to water. But the, the rule of thumb is to kind of watch for that top inch of soil or the depth of the top part of your finger, that first section of your finger. If, if you kind of stick it on the side and it feels dry all the way down and you pull your finger out and no wet soil is stuck to your finger, you definitely need to water. In between watering, you can get a spray bottle and fill it full of water and kind of mist the plant. That humidity is really good for herbs and really keeps them happy. Plants like it cool. The ideal temperature, according to the research, is 70 degrees, but no one is saying you got to turn your air conditioner down or you have to maintain the exact temperature in your home um, all year round. If you get cold, you can run your furnace. And if uh, 70 degrees is too low for you in the summer, um, you can't afford to keep your air conditioner, no one's saying your plants will survive. Again, the ideal temperature is 70 degrees just be aware of placement like i mentioned earlier if you put it in front of the window have you ever gone up to one of your windows in the summer or a patio door and where the sun is beating in and yes it's coming through and it's that beautiful sunlight your plants are going to love it if you stick your hand right up against that glass it's going to be warm even with the tempered glass 
the heat still comes through. So make sure your plant isn't directly up against the glass. Give it some space, maybe check on it. You don't want your leaves to be hot. And so if you have to kind of adjust the spacing, I know at home, I have a tray that I'm gonna put my plants on and I'm gonna kind of work and see what's the best angle and best position so that they're getting that sunlight, but it's not overheating. Also make sure you don't place your herbs near a stove or like a heat surface. Uh, watch out for vents that are in the ceiling or floor. I saw um, an herb garden fail online where someone thought it'd be really cute to get all these little succulent plant holders and plant a bunch of herbs and put it on the top of her stove. And it was just too warm in that area. And she couldn't, she couldn't maintain her little garden. If your home does get too cool in the winter, you can place a heating pad underneath your planters. I don't know that we have that problem here in Arizona, but um, just depends on if you run your heat or not. Maybe we have some cold days at some points of, of the year. So again, light, water, temperature. Now choosing the right planter. Four to six inch pots are ideal. They fit really nice on windowsills. And if you're buying a baby plant from the store, that's a very good size. Here is a baby plant that we're gonna be planting today. And it's gonna go really good. This is that, that lemon balm and it smells so good. We're gonna talk about the great pro properties of lemon balm here in a minute. Clay pots are great too, uh, but they can dry out quickly inside, especially when you're running your air conditioner. Air conditioners pull the humidity out of the air and so clay is very absorbent. And so it can almost pull that moisture from your plant right through the clay pot and out. So you might wanna consider using clay pots that are painted or ceramic pots or even plastic ones, but you can think outside the pot and be a little creative. There's a lot of ideas online, as you can see on the slide, those big giant cans of spaghetti sauce or salsa, you can use those um, to kind of Plant. Again, those don't have natural drainage holes in the bottom, so you're going to want to make sure you have a good amount of gravel and then your soil and then your plant. Also at the top, you'll see some tea boxes that um, people have used to kind of start off their little succulent plants or seedlings. I'm going to be planting my seeds in a tea box today, and this is my Harry and Megan uh, tea, tea tin that I got at Windsor Castle when I went to London. And I did um, drill five holes at the bottom to kind of allow for drainage. So it's going to be sitting on its lid at home. But I did buy some rocks to put inside of it just to be safe, to just to make sure I have that really good. But something this size is really good for um, starting seedlings in. And eventually when your, your plants kind of grow to the next level, you can change the size of your pot. Now we want to spend some time talking about organic fertilizers. We hear a lot about go organic, everything should be organic. We don't want pesticides in our, in our foods and our fruits and vegetables. But there's a lot of natural things you can give your plants right at home that are gonna give them so many nutrients and so much value. And some of it you might even not have to pay for or buy extra stuff that you might already have at home. They do promote growth and flower production. They are eco-friendly safe and at home they're easily available. It's like a nutrient rich mineral abundant protein shake for your plant. Kendra and Kara, our dietitians, would be so happy. So here's a few examples. Eggshells. After you crack open your egg you can um, put it out on a paper plate or a paper towel and let it um, dry. You want to make sure it's all the way dry and then crackle that up and you can put that into your soil, sprinkle it on the top that does lower the acidity of the soil and eggshells contain a lot of calcium. So that um, contributes to your plant's health. Bananas and their peels are high in protein, or sorry, potassium and magnesium, nitrogen and phosphorus. And there's two ways you can use bananas and their peels in your plants. You can take a banana peel after you're done eating the actual banana and cut it into fine little strips, kind of like just little spaghetti noodle size. And you could just lay those on the soil surface. Or you can take some actual banana, the riper the better, and kind of mash it up and mix it in with some water when you're watering your plants. So you can kind of make like a liquidy banana mush to put on your plant. These are 
really good tips if you're keeping your plants inside. If you're going to put banana mush on your plants and put it out on the patio, you could attract ants or you could attract bugs. So make sure that outside you're being really careful about that. You want to check your plants every time you take them outside to give them some fresh air when the weather's good and the temperature's okay. Give them some natural sunlight. Always kind of peek, make sure that nothing's gotten in there. Maybe wipe them down a little bit just to kind of protect them and also protect you from bringing anything from the outside in. If you have a fish tank at home and you have some fish, fish make waste, but that waste is very high in different nutrients that are really good for plants. So consider saving just a little cup of that uh, water before you clean out your tank and giving it to your plants, they'll say thank you. Cook pasta or potatoes. Have you ever seen that water and it's real starchy and it's kind of cloudy? If you don't use salt when you're cooking your pasta or potatoes, you can save some of that water, let it cool down, and then use it as your water once a month for your plant. It gives it a nice starch base, which has nutrients in it that's really good and really makes your plants happy. This one I thought was kind of interesting, but I saw it on several sites. And then I asked the guy at the nursery that's been helping me and he said, yeah, it's true, but only for healthy cereals. So things like wheat checks or Raisin Bran, and you get those crumbs at the bottom of the bag and it's not enough to make a bowl of cereal. So you end up kind of wasting it. Well, don't waste it, crumble it up, kind of add it to your soil. It's gonna provide vitamins and minerals for your plant. This isn't necessarily true with Fruit Loops or Lucky Charms, maybe the actual the grain part of the Lucky Charms, but not the marshmallows. So you wanna make sure it's not a high sugar-based cereal, but um, some of those other options would be really great. Uh, shredded wheat would be great for your plants. Again, it gives them that vitamin minerals that they're craving and water itself out of the tap isn't gonna provide. The last one we wanna suggest is tannic acid. It's found in used green tea crowns and it helps lower the pH level of your soil. So it's not something you have to do all the time, but maybe once in a while, if you've had a cup of tea, save the bag, let it dry out, kind of open up that bag and, and take a little bit of those grounds and kind of add it to your soil. So these are the healthy herbs and spices for your cancer. And I, again, I'm gonna point out a couple things. Kendra made some notes for me to share with you. Turmeric is great for anti-inflammatory powers. It's known to be one of the spices out there that is the number one for being anti-inflammatory positive impact on your body. It can counteract kind of some of the damage that those cancer cells are doing to your blood vessels. It does have a mild and pleasant flavor. It can be used on a dry rub. You can put it in soups. There's just a variety of things that you can do. It will give you a yellow color to your food because it is a base of curry powder. However, turmeric, I always say it wrong, only works if it's paired with a pepper, like black pepper or cayenne pepper. There's a, just a, a component in pepper that when it reacts with turmeric, it causes that anti-inflammatory property. If you look at a lot of your turmeric supplements out there and you look at the ingredient list, you're gonna see a pepper. And that's very, very important. So if you're using it in a soup, you're maybe already putting black pepper. Just make sure you're, you're, you're pairing it. If you like mild flavors, you don't want it to be too spicy, use the black pepper. If you wanna kick it up a notch, set your mouth on fire a little bit, uh, maybe try some cayenne pepper. Garlic is immune strengthening and it has anti-carcinogenic qualities. So it can help um, with just kind of to support your wellness and your nutrition overall. Ginger, whether it's dried or whether it's fresh, it has a lot of antioxidants, a lot of anti-inflammatory properties. It's very strong taste. So you kind of have to use it little by little and really kind of add a little bit and then taste it, maybe add a little bit more and taste it. And it's definitely an acquired taste, but you should give it a try. You can add it to fruit smoothies, juice, tea, even rice. Um, and ginger does help with nausea. It's a an natural anti-nausea component. So if you're feeling a little sick, maybe treatment's got you down, try that out. Then we have that pepper component and allspice. 
and then oregano. Uh, oregano is a natural disinfectant and it's also very good for helping slow spread of cancer cells according to the research. Saffron, thyme, those are other herbs um, and spices that kind of help with those anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, strong antioxidant properties. And then lavender. Lavender has so many benefits. It can help be calming. It can help it with sleep. It can help with digestion. It can help with a lot of things. So lavender is a good plant as long as you're not allergic to it. It grows at home and it has a pretty flower. So last minute tips and advice before we get into the actual planting part of your herb garden at home. If you start with seeds, read the packet and follow directions. It tells you exactly how deep to plant the seeds. There's even one um, type of herb out there where it's so specific about how you grow it and how deep you put it in the soil that it says, just lay it on the top of the soil. Don't even cover it with soil, just lay it on the top and that's how it starts to root itself. Um, so you, you definitely, that's different than sticking a big hole and putting it way down. You don't want them to be too deep. You need them to be able to get the air, get the things that they need. The seeds that we're going to plant today, both go down about a quarter of an inch. So very small, but still they're covered, um, by soil. Once your plants, um, the roots start coming out of your, the potted plant. If you start with like a smaller plant, like when I use my tin, and I noticed that maybe those roots are coming out those holes I put on the bottom, it, it's definitely a sign to move it to a bigger potter or planter and kind of give it that space. They need room to grow. When you bring home plants already pre-potted from the nursery, don't keep them in the plastic containers that the nursery had them in. Take those out of there, cut them out, kind of or squeeze them out, pull them out and plant them um, and put them in different things in your home. Again, think outside the pot, and there's a lot of options um, for containers that you can use, just as long as you have that drainage option. Cut your herbs and use them. It's like people who are trying to grow out their hair, they say one of the most important things you can do is actually get your hair trimmed when you're trying to grow it longer because cutting the herbs encourages growth. So if you've got a bunch of lemon balm, don't just wait for it to get bigger and bigger. Start using that, trim it. If you see someone's leaves that aren't looking so great, maybe pull those off. Just, you don't wanna over trim it and get it down to a nub, but you wanna keep using those leaves, keep using those herbs. Um, just promote it to grow bigger and stronger. The chives, you know, you wanna cut a couple of those, put them on a salad, put them on tomato slices, put them on a big potato, like whatever you'd like, just try some different options. Those fertilizer suggestions we had, uh, they vary, but you want to like look into them a little bit more once you choose kind of the route you want to do. But the rule of thumb is once a week in the early stages of your plant's growth is make sure you're giving some fertilizer. And then um, you can slow down after the plant's established and, and doing really well. Okay, so it's time to plant. So I'm going to talk about exactly what you need for supplies. You're gonna need baby plants or seeds. Today we have both, so you can see both options. You're gonna pick your perfect pot or container that you wanna use. You're gonna get some rocks or marbles for drainage if, if your container is definitely kind of needing that. You're gonna to wanna to get some nutrient rich soil. So even from the beginning, when you first plant your herb garden, maybe you wanna take some time to put some eggshells in it, to put some of that, um, fish tank water or whatever to kind of build your soil up and just make it strong, healthy, nutrient rich soil before you even begin. Uh, I know there's a lot of research out there about Epsom salt and there's a, a recipe for how much, but you can sprinkle Epsom salt into your soil. You can use club soda to water once a month and that kind of brings that sodium, potassium. So, and then you need a small spoon or shovel um, I think today we're going to be using just a little straw because my seeds are pretty tiny and then you're going to want some water. So that's pretty much all you need. And a lot of that stuff you might already have at home. And then the rest you can pick up at your local nursery or garden. We are going to have an opportunity to ask questions at the end. And I, just as a reminder, I don't claim to be any kind of nursery expert. I've just done a lot of research. This was kind of an idea that's been 
in my head for a while. And I think maybe the pandemic kind of started that out for me is wanting to figure out how to do some of this stuff at home. But here on the screen, we'll show you ways to contact social work. Jessica and I are the social workers, but we're supported by Sierra. She coordinates all that we do. This is the second of uh, four Fun Fridays. Uh, in two weeks, we'll have a body scrub class where you can learn how to make a three ingredient, natural, probably you have everything at home, uh, body scrub that's good and safe and gentle on your skin. And then two weeks after that, we're gonna have a journaling class and we're gonna learn about journaling. So make sure you sign up for those um, if you feel like you need stuff in advance or information in advance. Otherwise, we post our links on the website and you can go on our website to our calendar page and you can always get our links to our lives each week. Let's go ahead and start planting. I'm gonna shut this down so you can see what I'm doing in the background. Okay, I'm gonna move around here. We do recommend that you wear gloves. I did not bring my gardening gloves today, so I did have to borrow some rubber gloves from our nurses. We just want to keep our hands clean. I have fingernails, so I like to keep the dirt from getting underneath there. So the first one we're going to plant today is that lemon balm. So my pot does have a drainage hole already in it. I can stick my finger in there, but just to make sure, I did put a bag of those rocks in the bottom, kind of layered them all to be a nice like thin layer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a big chunk, a cup full of potting soil and get that started. You don't wanna fill up your pot all the way to the top. You just want a nice base on there because you're going to put your plant in with all the roots and then you're going to um, add the soil from the top. These little tags are really important. Important. They come with each plant, fruit, flower, anything you purchase at the nursery. On the back is all the instructions. You want to save these and you do want to tuck them in. If you want to wash them and put them in a drawer, that's fine as long as you remember what your plant is. Today was pretty easy. So this is the lemon balm. Again, it smells so good. I wish I, the smell of vision was working. It does come in this pot already. So what I'm doing is loosening up the soil just by giving it a gentle squeeze around the side. I want to make sure that it's been sitting in there for a while. So it's probably really adjusted to its container and it's been real happy and comfortable and watered. And then I'm going to grab the whole plant and gently, gently pull it out of that container. As you can see, all the roots are all condensed and that's good. You just wanna break it up a little bit. So very gently, you're just gonna kind of give it a little massage. You don't wanna rip it and pull it apart. You're gonna damage the roots, which is gonna damage this plant that's already established. But you just wanna loosen it up ever so slightly just to kind of let it know like, hey, you're moving to a new home and we're gonna give you more space and we're gonna give you more room to grow and just get bigger. Now, once you put your plant in there, you're gonna kind of adjust and go, is that the right level or do I need to add a little bit more below it? So I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more soil below it. Kind of make this nice little bed for it. And there is about even with the top of the plant. And that's what you want to see. You're not going to mash it down too hard. Again, be gentle on these. These are herbs. But what you're going to do is lightly kind of just fill in around the edges with some extra dirt. Just make it real nice and happy, tucked in there. Maybe even just a little bit more. As you can see, or I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I am making a little bit of a dirt mess at work today, but that's okay. I bought a, a nice, easy $1 tablecloth from the dollar store I was there. 
and it will fold up and contain this mess and easy cleanup. So if you're at home and you don't have a good garden workspace, or you can't do it on a patio or in a garage, you could do it right at your kitchen table. Just put something down to kind of protect your space. And there we go. It's planted, that lemon balm plant. I am gonna kind of take care of these babies and look after them and maybe provide some updates. Hopefully they thrive at home. Uh, this one's gonna stay right here at the Glendale office on the patio because it has brilliant light. Um, so we can peek on it. Maybe we'll share an update from time to time. After you get your plant potted like that and it's all settled with the soil, you do wanna give it a nice, good drink. That soil you just added, is gonna be really dry. So it's gonna so soak up the moisture. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure, again, feeling about an inch deep that you can hit that moisture. So you're gonna go in there and just kind of give it a good drink. I'll do that after we're done here today. The next one I'm gonna show is I am gonna show how to use the tin and plant some seeds. So I'm gonna start off by putting in my drainage rocks. I apologize for the noise here. I think it's loud. Again. So again, we're gonna make sure there's a nice thin layer of gravel or stone or whatever you choose. Again, these bags were very small, but that's like a perfect amount. And that was right at the dollar store for a dollar. So I was doing three plants, so I grabbed three of them. I just didn't want to have excessive amount of rocks at my place. So I'm going to put the soil I need for seeds because with seeds, you're not going to plant them and then cover them too deep. Again, the seeds that I've chosen to plant only go in about a quarter inch. You don't want to go right up to the top. You want to leave yourself a little bit of room so that when you water and that kind of builds up, it doesn't overflow and you make a big mess at your house. You just kind of lightly tap the soil down. You don't want to smush it and compress it. It's not Play-Doh, it's potting soil. But you do want to make sure you kind of have a good amount in there. So it's about right up to the top of this emblem. So I do have about a centimeter or two deep where uh, there's no soil. So that's going to give me a nice amount of space. And then I'm gonna use this straw. I'm gonna dig just a little line in here where I'm gonna plant my seeds. And hopefully they grow and thrive. I think that's one of Megan's, um, Megan's uh, things is you, you can't just, you can't just survive, you need to thrive. So hopefully my chives thrive. So. Here's my seed packet that I picked up at the store. Just as a heads up, these organic seeds were only $1.69. So getting started with fresh herbs at home doesn't have to be an expensive project. And they're, they're very tiny, these chive seeds. They look almost like a, um, a chia seed that you would put in your smoothie. And I'm just gonna sprinkle them Kind of throughout that little trench I made with the straw. You can use a spoon at home, but the straw is very gentle. It creates just the right amount of space. And then I'm gonna lightly cover them up. Again, they're only supposed to be covered with about a quarter inch of soil. And then they're done. I'm gonna put this tin on my tray and I'm gonna give it a nice good watering and it's gonna drain out. Um, so we wanna we want the drainage so that that water doesn't build up, it doesn't mold, it doesn't kind of change. And then one last plant, this is cilantro. Who doesn't love fresh cilantro in their salsa? And it's also good in dips and other things. There's actually a genetic component. If you're one of those people that says, cilantro tastes metallic to me or it tastes like soap to me, it just tastes awful, you might have um, in your genes, a thing that actually per makes you feel that way about cilantro. Some people have this code in their genetics that <laughs> changes the flavor of cilantro from this nice herb that goes well on so many things, so many dishes, to making it taste like a 
metal soap combination, which would be awful if you think about it to eat. This one's a little bit smaller, so I'm giving it a little bit more of a base because I know I'm going to need it. It looks a little sad right now. I think it didn't enjoy its life at the, the nursery before I picked it up, but hopefully it likes my house much better. This one is going to go at home. So again, I'm loosening up the plastic pot, pulling it out, and it looks so great. All those roots are nice and healthy. We're just gonna lightly tap. Now that one's coming apart pretty good. That indicates to me that the store had probably not watered it as well as it needed to be. And that's probably why it looks a little sad, but I'm a social worker. We're gonna make it look real happy by the end. So again, we're just gonna fill it around the edges. Get it kind of all ready to go. You don't want to fill it to the very top with soil, but just about. Again, when you water them, it's going to kind of float, make like a little mud pile. I'm going to put just a little bit more in here. And after we finish the question and answer portion of this and I turn it off, I'm going to give it a nice watering. So special thank you to Megan and her dad for helping me. Uh, Megan doesn't even know she inspired me, but she has these big gardens in the backyard and um, her dad is really worried about whether she's going to be successful, but I said she's going to do great. So there we go. Here's some cilantro, there's some lemon balm and some chives in a planter. And now I'm going to take some time and if you have questions, I'm going to take a look at them and answer them for you. Okay, so if you have a question, don't hesitate to fire it out in the chat option at the bottom. Don't, I see we have so many people in here. Um, thank you, Laura and Danny. Appreciate you stopping in. McKay's there too. Um, and Amber. Any questions? Again, our next session is in two weeks and um, it's going to be a body scrub class. I know I, I am looking up essential oils and figuring out which, which scent I'm going to use when I make the scrub myself. So how do we begin? Should we start by visiting a nursery? That's a great question. So I didn't know a lot about herbs or planting. In fact, everything I've ever tried to plant in the past has not been very successful. I'm really good with some of the annual plants that go outside. Um, I've had potted plants, geraniums. I can do geraniums really, really good. So I did a little homework about what I was interested in. Like, so I was very interested in doing the herbs. So I did some just looking on the internet, but again, we don't, we know that Google doesn't always tell you the truth. So. You got to do a little homework. You got to look at some verified sites, but I got a basic idea of what I wanted. And then I did go to uh, one of the nurseries in town and I talked to not just one of the reps in the garden, but I asked the lady who approached me, I said, I need to talk to somebody who can teach me because this is going to be gardening for dummies or gardening 101, 101. And she brought over a lady who's been working at the nursery for about 20 years. And she kind of taught me some basics like the potting and how to do it. She told me some of the mistakes that people make and how often I need to water, and how much light and what I was willing to do. What effort was I willing to put in? Did I want a simple plant that didn't require a lot of work or was I willing to take that time and maybe you have something that's gonna need some attention and love and care every couple days? So I was honest with her about that. So, she gave me some advice and from there, there's videos on YouTube that teach you some things. There's all kinds of good articles um, out there, but those people that work at the nurseries in town, they really love to share their knowledge. Second question, how should we clean the herbs before eating them? So when you bring them home from the store, so for example, the cilantro plant and the lemon balm plant that I just did, I brought those home from a nursery. So before I bring them into my house, I'm going to use a mild solution 
um, of water and just a tiny bit of dish soap just to make sure there's no um, chemical dirt bugs or anything on there. Mild. I'm going to use water on the leaves, but on the soil, I'm just going to put a little bit of mild dish soap solution. It's the only time I'm really going to use any type of chemical on my plant, but I don't know what was those plants were exposed to at the store. So I want to kind of keep that clean. At home, um, when I do um, kind of cut the herbs and use them, rinsing them off in water, laying them out, I'm going to keep mine inside so I know they're not going to be exposed to anything. So they're all natural. I'm not putting chemicals on them and chemical fertilizers. So a light water will be good. Special clippers to trim them. You don't need special clippers. I mean, you can go and buy special clippers. I actually bought um, a set of, their, I think, the eyebrow trimmers. <laughs> They're very tiny scissors. Um, they come in like the makeup section at Walgreens. The lady at the nursery suggested those for trimming um, the fine herbs like the cilantro. You just want to make sure that whatever you're trimming, you're not using paper cutting scissors on other items. When you use those types of scissors on other items, it really dulls them. And so then if you go back and try to cut paper with them, it can cause kind of like a problem. But those special little clippers, they have fancy ones. Um, they have ones for bonsai trees, etc. cetera. But um, they have this little kind of um, for trimming, like I said, your eyebrows, your eyelashes, whatnot, and they're very little. They have a little cap that goes on them. She said, those are absolutely perfect for plants. Coffee grounds are good fertilizer. <laughs> Starbucks does give them out for free. Thanks, McKay. That's a great point. Um, coffee grounds are great for your fertilizer and you can go to any of your Starbucks stores and say, do you have any used grounds? And they will bag them up for you and give them to you. It's a good thing to start in your pot mixture. Um, in the beginning and kind of give it that base and then maybe every once in a while treat it just like you treat your dog by giving it a pup cup from starbucks you could give it a little sprinkle of that coffee grounds and there's just so many nutrients and things in the nitrogen that comes out of those um, grounds it's really good for your plant and they'll give it to you for free what is the link for future webinars so all of our links for all of our classes are on our website. So every week they get posted for what's going on that week. We have newsletters that go out electronically that kind of talk about what's happening at Ironwood. Our marketing department's really great at kind of promoting all the things that we have going on, all of our talks, all of our activities. But if you go to the calendar section of the website, which is ironwoodcrc.com, you click on the calendar link, it's gonna show everything happening in that week. And it's also gonna provide all the hyperlinks. You can also contact us at socialwork at ironwoodcrc.com or wellness at ironwoodcrc.com. Um, it's getting posted right in the chat right now if you wanna take a peek at it. What did I use to put holes in the tin? So um, for that tin, I just used a drill. Um, I had one of my friends come over and drill the holes for me because I don't have tools like that at my house. Um, not very technical when it comes to that kind of stuff or hands-on. I'm learning, but um, I don't have tools like that. I got a hammer and a screwdriver. So what he did tell me um, as a tip when you're drilling the holes is to turn the tin upside down and drill the holes from the bottom in because that metal that frays from the drill kind of cutting into it is going to be in the inside. If you were to drill from the inside of the tin out, um, that fray would be on the outside and then you risk the chance of cutting your hand if you're touching the bottom of the tin because um, there will be kind of like this fraying of metal. So he said, turn the tin upside down and drill inward, not drill from the inside of the tin out. So they posted the links for a website, for our calendar. Each month our calendar is different. Uh, we have so many of our doctors and providers are doing some great talks about cancer, about care, before, during, and after. We have survivorship information. We have so many nutrition and supportive care service videos. So please go to our YouTube page and take a look. Any of the things that we post live, uh, we record and then we put on there. We are creating this awesome digital library for 
patients and anyone in the community, all of our activities are open up to anybody. You don't have to be an Ironwood patient. You could be going to another practice and just wanna participate. We'd love to have you. Are you going to use the lemon balm as an aroma? Yes, so you can use it. You can take it and boil it in water um, and just have that kind of cooking and boiling and smelling up your whole kitchen, dining room, living room, and kind of just getting that smell. You can actually break it down into a tea um, and drink that. It's supposed to help reduce stress, lower anxiety, help with sleep. Um, there's even topical recipes you can do to treat different ailments with lemon balm. So I definitely am gonna promise I'm gonna do some more homework before I do anything. I'm not gonna eat it or rub it on a skin thing until I make sure that um, I'm doing it the correct way. None of these herbs or spices, although they may have properties that are good antioxidants, good for anti-inflammatory pr properties, good for anti-cancer, none of them are intended to replace the treatment you're getting from your doctors. And if you're ever concerned about an interaction using a certain herb or spice and something you maybe you heard online or maybe you heard somewhere, always talk to your doctors. Your doctors are the experts and they're the ones that can answer those kinds of questions. But no one's telling you to stop taking, you know, um, your immunotherapy and start just eating um, garlic on every meal. Um, we're just saying these are great herbs and spices that can be very helpful to you. Is there any community or free nurseries? So each city is different. I know Phoenix has a lot of community gardens that are out there and people can go and just spend time gardening and spend time working in the garden and kind of growing plants. I know down at Indians, Indian Steel Park, there's a huge one and they use all of those fruits and vegetables that they grow to feed like the homeless population. So that's really kind of an awesome thing to get involved with. But I don't know how the rules have changed with some of those community um, gardens with COVID. Uh, COVID has changed a lot of things in our life, but uh, a lot of the nurseries have some digital uh, webinars going on. I know a couple of the ones on the west side of town that I visited had some webinars and monthly things you could check out. So YouTube, again, has tons of great um, educational things on planting and people talking and showing how to do things. Any other questions from anybody? I, I want to really um, thank you all for coming and uh, for taking the time to sit with me and enjoy this and um, say hi to Jessica. She's out there too. Uh, well, thank you, Laura. I'm glad that you're going to start your herb garden this weekend. That's great to hear. I want to see pictures and group on how it's doing. But we are really excited to do these fun Fridays. We're having a lot of fun just doing the prep work for them. And so um, we're glad that you're here to join us and be a part of this. And uh, we hope we see you at the next one again in two weeks or we make body scrub at, or maybe you attend one of our other lunch and learns or other educational seminars. We have so much content to share with you and we love it when you're involved. If there's no more questions, I just wanna say bye and um, share your pictures with me. If you start your own herb gardens at home, I wanna see the progress and I promise to update you too. Take care.